where you will go behind the scenes of how the mind of successful entrepreneurs, experts and true leaders really works. Here you won't just listen, you will understand the guiding principles to create massive change in any area of your life. And of course this podcast is hosted by the strong, lovely, with the sexy Jewish accent, Lidor Dayan. He was a high school dropout, had a child when he was just 17 years old. Later on, he quit from a 300k a year job to start his own company, which at that point made him close to nothing for about a decade. Today, he is the CEO of Lightspeed VT, which is a world leader in interactive training and communication-based system. Also the host of the Dropping Bumps podcast, the bottom line show, Making Moves, and he is a future world Hollywood actor. <laughs> Welcome, Bradley, to the Mind Body Podcast, brother. A pleasure to thank have you here. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Great. So uh, let's drop some bumps, like you said, bump diggity bumps, bump diesels. <laughs> let's get her done. Great. So I want to first start uh, a little bit about your early childhood. How did you grow up? If you can please share with us a little bit. Well, I grew up in a, in a blue collar family, you know, probably middle class to, you know, lower to lower class to middle class financial status. Um, watched my dad start to build companies, start to be entrepreneurial and then had a few mishaps and pretty much gave up. And then uh, just just really dropped out of high school at 16, moved out of my house and started to, you know, face life as a, as a young man and had to learn everything the hard way. And it was just when you were about 16 years old, right? Correct. That's amazing. And I remember seeing a little bit about your background and stuff. And uh, actually, the Lightspeed VT was, uh, you said that it was an accident, right? Well, it wasn't necessarily an accident. Um, I didn't plan on it, really. I created the system to help me train and motivate and communicate with my with my you know students or my you know clients and found that it was so effective that I figured I'd have two choices I could compete with these other big name training organizations or I could collaborate with them and I'm under the impression that collaboration is 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 best you know in this world when you compete you're basically taking something from somebody else and And you're competing for the same things and I believe that if you create if you focus on creating right you don't have to compete you just create and that way you're you're introducing new things into the universe and you're providing more for the universe and I think when you provide more for the universe the universe provides more for you mm-hmm. and uh, there is so many people that uh, in a situation right now that they live in their comfort and they live a nine-to-five job and for you you were in the point that you were really making good amount of money compared to the average person so why was it for you to actually make the decision to quit your job and uh, when all your family all your friends everybody telling you wow don't do this it's really risky because you talk a lot about taking risks yeah I mean I think risk is opportunity You know, opportunities are usually disguised as risk. That's why not too many people take them. Uh, 
I knew that I could always go back and, and, and make a career in sales. I always knew that I could make money if I needed to, so I had really nothing to worry about. Um, I'm not afraid to do things, take risks, lose. I'm not afraid to look stupid. Um, so I think that worked to my advantage. You know, I always knew that I could just come back and, you know, go to work again if I needed to. So at the end of the day, I didn't know it'd take 18 years to build a company. But on the other hand, you know, I, I was also not afraid of what would happen if it didn't work out. Do you believe that, uh, you must go all in into something or doing it uh, part time or it depends on the person well i mean it depends on the person if you don't have the discipline to to you know take the necessary steps and hold yourself accountable to get the job done then you might have to go all in where you have no other choice but to do that i did the opposite i had a choice and i knew that i could go back and get work and make a living if it failed so I wasn't afraid to fail too many people are afraid to fail and I think that stops them from making any move at all you know they, they, they look at the risk as opposed to the opportunity I look at the opportunity as opposed to the risk mm. and when I quit it was like you know worst case scenario I come back and get my job back Yes, and you talk a lot about uh, making adjustment along the way because uh, like you said, uh, uh, stuff not going to happen the way you want it, right? So sometimes right. Uh, you, you got to adjust. So how do you evaluate adjustments? Well, you got to pay attention to the information that you're getting. I mean, if you're out there knocking on doors and nobody's responding and you just keep going, you're, all you're going to do is extend how long it takes for you to lose. Um, a lot of people say never give up. Well, never giving up doesn't mean that you can't make adjustments I would agree that you should never stop trying to go for what you're looking for however how you go about finding it might need to change so when I started my company I was planning on starting a training organization where I, I trained people live I was going to build a big facility and have people come in and you know do that then I decided I was going to go out on the road and come to companies because it was a lot easier to go out to them rather than have them come to me and then I made an adjustment and decided to go online with my training uh, make interactive CD-ROMs then online so I made another adjustment with that then another adjustment going online and then I ran into a competition and made another adjustment and decided to be a software company and as opposed to a training company so at the end of the day, if I didn't make those adjustments, I might be working for someone right now. There may not be a light speed or there wouldn't be. And at the end of the day, um, you're, not, you're not able to fulfill your dreams when you give up that easily. So never give up is correct, but you need to be able to make adjustments, man. It's not just for chiropractors. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're totally right. And there is so much uh, about uh, collaborating with others, right? Because there is uh, like-minded people uh, around this world. So uh, how was it for you uh, to collaborate with those people that uh, look at the, the world the same as you do? Well, when you collaborate, you create, right? And when you create, you add more to the universe. And when you're a provider to the universe, I believe the universe provides back. Some people compete in the universe, which is... You know, only one person's going to get this, and it's going to be me. They're out there trying to, to take for themselves rather than, rather than provide more for everyone. So when you collaborate, you create. And when you create, you're not necessarily, you know, taking what already exists. You're adding to what exists, so you're making it more abundant. And I think the abundant mindset is the key. So... You know, I just naturally lean towards collaboration. It's much easier, in my opinion, to collaborate and create than compete and, uh, you know, grind. Mm -hmm. And you, as an entrepreneur, you have many, many years. So for those entrepreneurs that might listen to this podcast, uh, as well as me, and I'm in my early, I'm like 27. So uh, you talk a lot about, uh, okay, you, you got to make mistakes, but you can uh, make a shortcut if you actually understand from other people's mistakes, right? So what is it for you? What can you give to those people that listen here? Because many entrepreneurs uh, in their 20s have a lot of pride, ego, and they're oversensitive about stuff. So yep. they, they think they know it all, right? 
So, right. uh, okay. what what do you believe uh, is a good guidance or like your main keys, as you can call it like that, that uh, can lead to a successful uh, entrepreneurial uh, business and uh, those kind of stuff? Well, the key is, is always to listen to the information that you're getting. Always seek out data and knowledge and realize that there's other people that have went down roads that you're going down that can tell you where the potholes are. When I grew up and started doing this, I didn't listen to anybody. I went out and basically learned the hard way about everything. I got screwed a thousand times. You know, if I would have sought legal counsel, you know, I always thought, you know, well, a lawyer's just going to charge me money. I probably would have saved way more money than a lawyer would have cost. I didn't read books. I didn't take courses. I didn't jump on webinars. I didn't go to events. You know, I didn't seek out knowledge. So, you know, trust me when I tell you, you can learn something from everyone. You can learn something from a homeless person. You can learn someone from a child. You can learn something from everyone and every time you walk up to a relationship or, or start a relationship and meet somebody new you have to realize that they know people you don't know that you might want to or need to they know stuff that you don't know and if you have that open mind i think you're more susceptible and, and open to, to gathering knowledge to use along the way if you were going to go camping would you want a tent and a stove and a thermos and some food and a pocket knife and know where to go or would you rather just go out there and rough it so life is kind of like camping right you never know what's going to happen you don't know what the weather's going to be so what you do is you ask mm -hmm. and you get direction and you don't have to use it it's just good knowledge to have it's it's data to help you guide your own way through life yes yes you're so, so right and about uh, asking you it's also about listening, right? Because for me, like I used to like do a lot of podcasts, but I didn't really actually listen to what people tell me. And you talk it a lot about uh, persuading and uh, uh, in sales. And can you uh, show with us your, uh, you have a story about uh, Bob's mom. Remember that? I saw it when you did it with Ed Milet. So can you share it? Because people uh, have this a lot uh, about actually listen. Active... Uh listening is basically listening to what the individual is actually saying not necessarily well more more listening to what they're meaning rather than what they're saying so but the Bob's mom thing is when I used to train people I'd have a quarter a dime and a nickel and I would say listen listen to me Bob's mom has three kids the first one is Demetrius and I'd hold up the dime the second one is Nicholas and I'd hold up the nickel, and then I'd say, what's the third one's name? And very rarely, if ever, did anyone get the third one's name. And the third one's name was Bob. Now, how do you know that? Well, because if you were listening when I started, I said, Bob's mom has three kids. Mm -hmm. Okay, so obviously Bob was one of the children. You didn't hear Demetrius and Nicholas uh, complain, did you? So Bob must have been the third one. But at the end of the day, listen, I mean, if you're going to go sell something, you got to understand one thing. The individual customer or the customer themselves, whether it's a couple or an individual or a company, they have the keys to allowing you to sell them whatever product that you have. You have to ask questions, listen to the answer, and actively listen to the answer. Like pay close attention to what they're telling you because they will tell you exactly how to sell them that particular product if you're listening most salespeople just talk they 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 get excited when they get a customer you know they start to explain their product talking about all the great things that it can do and and how they you know think that it should help the customer rather than slow down ask great questions listen to the answers and discover how to sell the customer so I always use a chair as an example. If I'm going to get a, a, a new chair, I walk into a furniture store, the, the salesman starts telling me how comfortable it is and what kind of a value it is and how long it's going to last. And they don't even ask me what the chair is for. If they would have asked what the chair was for, and I mentioned to them that I had to get you know, a chair for my ex-wife because the judge ordered me to do so in the divorce, well, telling me the chair is comfortable isn't necessarily selling me the chair. 
telling me that the chair is going to last a long time isn't necessarily selling me the chair. Matter of fact, it's unselling me the chair. Where if they would have just asked a few simple questions, found out that I'm in a divorce, I was ordered by the judge to replace a chair for my ex-wife, whether I like her or don't like her, whether it's a, whether it's an amicable divorce or a, or a, a rough one, doesn't that matter? Mm-hmm. What kind of chair am I replacing? What's the chair going to be used for? Who's the you know who's going to be sitting in the chair the most? Where's the chair going to go? Like most salespeople don't ask these questions, and more importantly, even the ones that do, they don't listen to the answer, and then they're not able to take that information and provide you know value to the customer because they don't have that information. One time, I saw a guy come in to buy a vehicle. Um, Three different salespeople talked to him. The guy was leaving. I had a rule at the car dealership I was running that nobody left without me talking to him. I walked up. Everybody said, you know, he's not interested in the vehicle. He's going to go check other models. I walk up to the guy. I said, how you doing, Bradley? I understand you talked to a couple of salespeople and didn't see anything you liked. He said, yeah, I got to, I'm going to keep looking. So I said, well, let me ask you a question. Who's the car for? And he said, my daughter. And I said, you know, asked him a series of questions. But the car ended up being for the daughter, not him. Mm -hmm. Well, the salespeople were telling him how fast it was, how how many girls he was going to get in it. Mm -hmm. You know, they didn't talk about safety. They didn't talk about reliability. They didn't talk about, you know, uh, you know, what if your daughter's out in the middle of the uh, desert? Because turns out the daughter was going to be driving to Phoenix to go to school. So what if she's back and forth from Phoenix, breaks down in the middle of the desert? Like reliability, does, it, does that matter? So they didn't ask these questions. So they were talking about the features of the car that resonated for them. They were excited because the car was fast. They didn't care about the safety. Well, the father cared about the safety. So anyway, long story short, I asked a few questions, walked over and sold them the exact same car. Three other people didn't couldn't sell them, and they were wondering how I did it. Well, how you do it? is you ask questions and you listen to the answer. Selling isn't about talking. Selling is about listening. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, it's also about mastering your emotions, right? Because if you can't master your emotions and you're always in your head, then you actually can't listen. Yeah, well, ultimately, again, I mean, sales is a lot of like playing chess. I mean, you you know, when I make a chess move and and the other person is, is sitting there staring at the board, to figure out what move they want to make. I'm anticipating all the different moves they could make. And I'm thinking about my next four moves. Mm -hmm. So again, I mean, sales, whether people like to admit it or not is a game. And if, if you want to be good at the game, you better become very well practiced, drilled and rehearsed. Just like when you play any sport, you want to be conditioned. You want to be capable and there's skills in that trade. And if you don't actively seek out the knowledge and practice those skills, you're just going to be average. And one of the top skills to sales is the ability to listen and then use that information to build value for your product. If you want someone to buy your product, all you have to do is raise the value of the product higher than they have for the value of their money. Mm-hmm. Like, let's say you have $50,000 in the bank, right? Mm-hmm. And, I need to, and I need to sell you something. All I have to do is make you value what I have more than you value the $50,000 in the bank. Mm-hmm. Now, how do I get you to value what I have more than you value your money if I don't know anything about you? So you got to first know the, the person. you got to know what he wants if there is... What he wants, what he values, how he's going to use it, what is he replacing. I mean, the list goes on and on. But the question is simple. Anyone that answers the question honestly is going to say you, you wouldn't, it wouldn't be very easy. So if I'm going to assume that this, that this coffee cup is valuable to you for the same reasons it's, I assume it's valuable to me and or I assume it's valuable to you, Guess what? I'm going to have a much harder time selling it to you. Salespeople get, in, get, in, get confused because they end up selling and making money and they think they're good. When in reality, the customer probably already 
knew they wanted that particular item. They knew, you know, how much it costs. The internet's filled with information. So a lot of these salespeople that, that think they're selling, really they're order taking. They're not selling at all. Selling is sell, uh, selling is 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 when the person says no, right? If you come into my company and buy my product, did I sell it to you or did you buy it? Because I think a salesman jo job starts when the customer says no yes. or the customer's leaving. That's when you turn into a salesperson and that's when you actually sold them the product. Until then, you just took an order. You were just in the right spot. You just smiled nicely. You were just courteous. You know, it doesn't mean you're a freaking kick-ass salesperson. It just means that you walked into a laydown. But to get someone to say yes after they've said no and, and no repeatedly, that's where the skill comes in. And if you want to be skilled, guess what? You need to practice, drill, and rehearse. You need to learn the information, learn the knowledge, be open to everybody. Some people that have been selling for 20 years say, oh, man, I've got 20 years experience. And I always say, do you? Or do you have one year experience 20 times in a row? Mm -hmm. Meaning you haven't learned anything for 20 years. You, you learned everything you learned in the one year, and then you just repeated it for 20 years. That's not 20 years experience. Yes. Yes, many people think like uh, they tell me all the time about my how I look because physically I have a shredded uh, body and I have a physique that I have very lean body fat. And like all people think there is a shortcut or something, but what you practice daily it's what's eventually going to become habit and what will transform your life either a good way or a bad way. So I believe it's like you say, repetition is the mother of skills. You got to practice stuff daily, day by day, even if you like it or you don't like it because. The elite people, people like you, they don't think emotionally if you want to do something or don't. They just know they need to do it because they're committed. They're committed long term. They see the big picture, the, the vision they have, and they don't just like uh, let their emotions control them, right? Well, I think, I think it, uh, one of the things that I notice amongst people that are more successful than others are they're not afraid to be uncomfortable. And the most successful people actually seek out discomfort. Most people seek this, or most people seek comfort, don't they? Mm -hmm. They want to be comfortable. You ask somebody, why do you want to make more money? Ah, I just want to be comfortable. I want to be able to pay my rent on time and not have to worry and not, not be uncomfortable. I just want to be comfortable, right? That's all I want to do is provide for my family and have a comfortable life. Well, let me tell you something. Opportunity is not in comfort opportunity is in discomfort when you go to the gym you're uncomfortable if you're getting results you're uncomfortable yes or no yes and you love the uncomfortable yeah I mean you have to pass on the donut you have to freaking go a little bit longer on the treadmill you have to experience a little more pain in the in the breaking down of the muscle you have to wake up sore you have to wake up and not get out and, and not skip the gym there's discipline involved and why is there discipline involved well because it's uncomfortable that's why most people don't have low body fat most people don't know they don't have the right education they don't know the food to eat they don't understand the the, the physiology of the body of how you know sugars increase you know change the blood and change the whole dynamic of your body they don't understand your you know uh, what do you call it when you're um, burn calories it's your uh why am i what? drawing thank you uh -huh. why am i drawing a blank when you burn calories what's it called when you burn calories yeah your metabolism, your metabolism? like they don't okay. understand metabolism and why it changes they think if they starve themselves that's good well you might lose weight but it also changes your 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 metabolism and now all of a sudden when you eat something that would have normally been just burnt off well, now it's going to store that because now your body has a brain of its own and it's thinking, well, I'm, this, this son of a bitch is going to starve me, uh -huh. so I better hold on to all the fat I can for future energy. You know, what you eat, how you work out, how often you work out, how much water you drink, there's knowledge there. It's a science. Do you believe, like, uh, for most people uh, in their early entrepreneurships, must be really real with themselves and other people? Because a lot of us, 
just mark ourselves like we fake it until we make it we're like we are an authority but we're not really an authority and we're like ah i'm the best i'm uh, this i'm coach i'm that so do you really need to be uh, yourself and actually uh, tell the truth yeah you gotta you gotta tell the truth man i mean if you remain yourself and be true to yourself you'll attract the people that should be around you and will support you and won't leave and the ones that shouldn't be there will leave mm -hmm. so just be who you are always tell the truth always have integrity even if it hurts you and in the in the long run it's going to pay off i've never seen anyone um that that was unethical or did anything opposite uh have any success for any length of time usually you know the store crashes the friendships crash the 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 money goes away you know and the next or or your health goes away or your mental health goes away so at the end of the day man you just got to always be yourself have integrity and treat others you know kindly and you said a lot about trusting your gut what do you think is the ratio between follow your instincts and feelings by using your brain as well because you can't just follow your gut and feelings uh, i remember ty lopez said it is uh, i was in one of his seminars in the past and he, he said like you can't just go into a war and trust your feelings you gotta have a brain you gotta have like a good strategy so what do you think is the ratio between this because you can't just follow your gut all the time have you ever went bowling yes you know those little you know those little rails that they put up for the kids yeah that's your instincts right they're just guides hmm. you use your brain you create strategy and you let your instincts be your guide have you ever thought you know i'm going to go do this but you, but your instincts told you you shouldn't mm -hmm. and then next thing you know you're like damn i knew i shouldn't have done that or damn i knew that guy was a piece of shit mm -hmm. or hey i knew that customer wasn't going to be you know happy or was going to give me a bad survey or you know hey i knew that girl was a cheater you know you always look back and say man i knew that but I did it anyway, that's because you're not listening to your instinct. You're, you don't walk around mindless just listening to your instincts, nor do they talk to you that way. Your instincts are your guide, okay? Mm -hmm. that you'll, you'll feel something, but I would definitely pay attention to your intuition. Mm -hmm. Your intuition is very strong. It's built in by nature. It's to keep us alive. I mean, you know, back in the day, you could sense danger. Mm-hmm. Some people fought and some people flew. It's the fight or flight. Yes. But that's a, that's a response to danger. You either fight or flight. But, but, but we could sense danger. Why can you sense danger? Well, you sense danger because that's your intuition. We're born with it to keep us alive. Mm -hmm. That's why when you get hungry, it's your, it's your gut telling your brain, hey, I need some nourishment. You're not going to die without food, but guess what? It tells you, hey, it's time for some energy. Why? Because it's trying to survive optimally. The same thing is with your intuition and success, man. Just pay attention to it. Be open to it. Pay attention to it. That's all. Do it, doesn't you, have to, it doesn't have to make all your decisions, but you definitely want to pay attention to it. If you got a gut feeling about something, you got intuition about something, I'd listen to it. I'd factor it. It doesn't mean you have to do it. I'd just listen to it. Factor it. It's more data. You want data, man. All the information you can get to help you make a decision, the better off you are. Do you believe being a small fish in a big pond or big fish in a small pond? Well, personally, I'd rather be a big fish in a small pond because, you know, if you're a little fish in a big pond, you can get eaten mm -hmm. quick. Okay? And then you're dead. Then you're not in any pond. Yes. You're in somebody's, you're in some fish's belly and mm -hmm. eventually shit out the other side. So I'd rather be a big fish in a small pond until I was a big enough and bad enough fish to survive in the big pond. And then I'd jump in the big pond and do the same thing I did before, which is kick ass, take names, and be freaking, you know. Yeah, you're totally right, man, because I, I will tell you from my own story. One a year and a half ago, I came from Israel, as you can see from my accent, I'm Jewish. So I came from Israel to America with $1,000. I just like, ah, follow my dreams. I want to be, be a citizen of America. I want to be here. I want to follow my dreams. But then you got a reality check and you see like how life it's actually is, right? And then you think to yourself like, maybe I'm not that good as I thought that I am. I'm not having the skills yet. I need to build it. And I think putting our ego aside and really go deep and know where we are 
right now in our life and where we really want to go. But if we want to go there, we got to, like, like the, the quote says, like, uh, there is no elevator to success. There is always the stairs. So, like you said, being a big fish in a small pond for me can be much, much better because I know the culture, I know everything. And Israel, let's face it, like a, a lot of people there uh, not, not, don't have really a work ethic and they just like take life the way it is. And I want to become a human example and uh, show people that it is good to dream big, but uh, like, like uh, any of us, like fail, fail forward and keep on going. Well, it depends on the pond. I mean, if you're in such a small pond that there are no opportunities. Six million people. Then, then, then you got to, I would, I would rather be a small fish in a big pond, but you know, at the end of the day, people want to take shit to the next level. You know how you take shit to the next level? How? Oh. Maximize the level you're on. And most people don't want to maximize the level they're on. They just want to go to the next level. And they're always trying to figure out how do I get to the next level? Maximize the level you're on and you outgrow the level you're on, which puts you on the next level. But most people want to jump. How do I get to the next level? Dude, you haven't even maximized the level you're on. So like maximize the pond you're in and then go to the next pond. Maximize that pond and then you'll go to a bigger pond. And pretty soon you're a big fish in a big pond. And that's what I'd rather be. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and there is a lot about like not trying everything by yourself, right? I used to everything, editing, da, 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 da. Listen, here's what I always tell people. How old are you? 27. Yeah, so I say, look down, bro. You see those footsteps? Yes. You see those footprints? Those are mine. I've been there, done that. So if you can get knowledge from me to avoid future problems for you, that's a smart person. People say smart people learn from their mistakes. I say smarter people learn from other people's mistakes. Mm -hmm. Like you don't have to make the same mistakes, man. You can stick your head up a bull's ass to check the meat, or you can just take the butcher's word for it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You've seen that show? Yeah. So if I, were, if I could start all over at your age, I could build my company way faster. Why? Because I would seek knowledge. I would build relationships. Relationships are the new economy. You know, I would provide value. I would seek to help others quicker. I was always about how do I get rich? How do I make money? How do I get more? Mm -hmm. And until I started worrying about how to help other people, it was a bitch. Like I used to chase success and now success chases me because I'm not worried about success. I'm worried about figuring out ways to solve problems. And the bigger the problems I can solve, the more opportunities I find and the more problems I can solve, the more money I make. So you, you can't be focused on helping yourself. You have to be focused on helping others. And it took me a long time to realize that. So if I were 27, I'd pick up books. I'd be reading a book a week for sure. I'd be reaching out to people that I admire or want to be like or, or have done something that I'm looking to do, and I would pick their brain. I would, I would check my friends. I would not hang around, you know, dipshit losers that want to talk about, you know, smoking weed and playing Xbox. Not that that's not fun and not that I can't say, hey, how you doing once in a while. I don't have to disown them for life, but they're not, just, they're not going to occupy my mind. I'm going to be putting positive shit in my mind. I'm going to be fixing my mindset. I'm going to get rid of all negativity. I'm going to get rid of all people who doubt me. And I'm going to go out there and I'm going to learn from people who have already done it. And then I'm going to be willing to do what most people aren't. I'm going to be willing to be uncomfortable. I'm going to seek discomfort and I'm going to put in the work. You know why they call it work? Why? Because it works. Ah, nice. I like it. <laughs> Yeah, you actually makes a lot of sense, and uh, it's really true. And uh, you talk uh, before we finish here. Uh, you said there is five pillars you always tell about success. You gotta have momentum, and can you share with us in a short brief? Well, the five factors to success that I talked about at one of my speeches, because I don't do the same talk every time. Mm -hmm. The five factors is just what I did for that particular uh, conference, but. To me, the first thing you need to do is take a chance, right? Most people won't take a chance because they're afraid of what might happen. They, they fear 
losing. They fear looking stupid. They fear, you know, being wrong. Well, you need to take a chance because without taking a chance, nothing's ever going to happen. That's a fact. So you need to take a chance. And in order to advise people how to do it, my advice is change what you fear. Don't fear, you know, possibly losing. Fear not ever changing. Like, just change what you fear because you're not going to get rid of fear. You're going to be afraid no matter what for a million different reasons. Mm -hmm. So just change what you fear. I didn't fear failing. I feared staying the same. Yes. I didn't fear what if I have no money. I, fe I feared what if I don't have enough money to, to buy my kids cars and put them through college. Right? I feared different things. So first thing you need, you need to do to take a chance. The second thing you need to be able to do is solve problems. Most people run from problems. You don't run from problems. You find problems. You look for problems. You welcome problems. Problems get you good at solving them. Problem gets you skilled and 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 experienced in solving them. Because the number two factor is solve problems. Be a very good solve uh, problem solver. And in order to get very good at anything, what do you have to do? Solve Repetition. Them. So so, dude, look for problems. Be very good problem solver. Third one was you need to be able to make adjustments. You know, too many people are laser focused on one thing and they're not listening to the data. They're not listening to the information. So they're just focused on one thing and all they're doing is going to, you know, take longer to, to fail because you can pound your head against the wall for, you know, and you'll never give up. And eventually you're going to have a crushed in head or you're going to knock yourself out. It doesn't mean you're going to succeed just because you never, never quit. You know, sometimes you need to quit. I've quit a lot of things, you know, that whole never quit is bullshit. You, you should quit. You should quit being negative. You should quit hanging out with your friends. You should quit sleeping in. You should quit trying to be comfortable. You know, so the third one is make adjustments. And what that means is listen to the information and be willing to shift and move, right? Shift and move. Mm -hmm. And then the fourth one is you need to train your ass off. That's the get knowledge part. Right? You need to get knowledge. You need to wake up every morning and seek knowledge in whatever particular area that you want to improve in. You should be improving every day. I always say don't compare yourself. Prepare yourself. You know, Don't be afraid of the guy who kicks a thousand different kicks. Be afraid of the guy that kicks once a thousand times. Mm -hmm. I think Bruce Lee said that. Yeah, so, yeah so, so at the end of the day, you know, you need to seek knowledge. So number four was train your ass off. When I say train, I mean learn, develop, improve every day. Read books, take courses, get on webinars, go to conventions, listen to podcasts, listen to people. Even if you don't think that they're as successful as you are, listen to people. You can learn something from everybody. And then the fifth one was never stop. And what never stop means is, you know, some people get, like you said earlier, some people get to a point where they're like, well, maybe I'm not good enough or maybe it's, you know, it's not meant to be or, you know, maybe, maybe I should just, you know, change what it is I want and they give up and you should never give up. You know, you should continue to strive for excellence. You should continue to develop and reach your potential and your potential is massive. If you're not, uh, you know, damn near a superstar or a superhero, well, then you're not even anywhere close to your potential. Human beings have amazing abilities. All of us, not just some of us, all of us. And if you don't realize that, that's part of your limitation. You need to change that mindset and realize that, man, if, if, if I've got, if I've got, you know, let's say a hundred feet of ability, most human beings haven't even occupied the first foot or two. You've got a long way to go. You've got a long way to, 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 you've got a lot of potentials, my point. So never stop reaching your potential was the fifth one. Yes, that's, that's so right. And I believe it's also having faith, right? Because sometimes in life when, when you walk on something and everything around you doesn't look the way you think it should be, but you still got to enjoy this process. Like you remember Gary Vee said it, you got to, and I, I interviewed Dave Meltzer and he said it best. He, don't attach your happiness to an end outcome. Attach it to, to the process. Because if you can learn to enjoy the struggle and the difficulties, then you can truly become happy. Because that's the, the end thing, right? Because success and everything that we want, we want it for a feeling. We want to feel happy. And happiness, I believe, comes from within. 
Yeah, most definitely, bro. A lot of people ask me, what's the key to success? I said, there is no key. It's a combination, and everyone has their own. Mm -hmm. You know, what may be successful to me may not be successful to you. Yes. May, what, what you think successful is may not be successful to another. A lot of people think I'm successful. They see Ferrari. They see watches. They see big offices. You hang around all the cool people, and they're like, man, Brad's successful. Well, Warren Buffett would think I'm a failure. Well, I mean, he wouldn't necessarily, but I mean, for an analogy, you see my point. Like, financially, Warren Buffett makes me look stupid, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the day, what I consider success may not be what someone else considers success. And I believe happiness is internal, just like you said. And in order for you to be happy, you have to determine what makes you happy and what, what you consider happiness is. And the second you're happy, in my opinion, that's when you're su successful. Because what is everybody really trying to accomplish with success? They're trying to be happy. I so I always, I always tell people, you know, if, if, if making $60,000 a year, coaching your kid's baseball team, and, you know, living life, having barbecues on the weekend, seeing your family, you know, raising your kids, if, if, if that truly makes you happy, well, then you are successful. You don't need to make millions of dollars to be successful. You can be successful making $60,000 as long as you're happy and there's no challenges and there's no pain and suffering and, and uh, you know, want. You know, when someone's yearning for something, wanting for more, that's what I consider not successful. So I know people with millions of dollars, but they want billions. So they're not successful. If you ask me if I think I'm successful, I'm not successful. Why? Because I want billions of dollars. Mm -hmm. I don't have billions of dollars, which means I'm a... I'm, I'm a failure. I'm failing. But I constantly am growing towards my goal. And one day, I will say I'm successful. But as of today, I'm not successful. But yet, a lot of people think I am. So that's proof that success is in the mind of the beholder. And Don't success... you think but, uh, that if you take yourself like 15 years ago, you would say the same? Like, I want to be a millionaire. And when I be a millionaire, I am success. Yeah, well... You know, stuff changes, yes, but, but, uh, it's you like, know, that, are you really happy right now? Do you can truly say I'm truly happy, fulfilled in my life? No, I'm not fulfilled, but I am happy. In other words, I'm one of those people that, that can, that can be happy anywhere. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm happy because I know where I'm going and I'm on the journey. And like whoever told you to be happy with the process, I'm happy because, you know, Wherever I go, I'm happy, bro. Like, I'm, a, I'm the life of the party. I, I, can, I can deal with being broke. I can deal with being rich. I can deal. I'm pretty happy all the time anyway. So, yeah, I'm happy, but I'm not satisfied. I'm not content. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's really something that's very high achievers always have the mindset that they're never satisfied, always hungry for more, right? So the, the last question I have for you, because I know we're short on time, is what would be your legacy you would like to leave? Um, well, I think everyone's going to leave a legacy whether they want to or not. But um, I, I think my legacy hopefully will be I changed the way education works. And, I've, and I'm known for the person that either started the job or finished the job. And I want to fix education and, uh, and, and ultimately make sure that the knowledge is shared. In other words, get the knowledge from the people who have it to the people who need it. I want to be like the Robin Hood of knowledge. Mm, nice. I like it. Cuz cuz right now, man, listen, the, there's the you've heard of the 1%? Mm -hmm. yes. Yeah, well, you, you think 99% of this earth's population are all lazy pieces of shit? No. So why is it there's 1% that has all the money? I think it's psychology. Uh, basically like a belief system we installed in our it's, head. Dude, it's because they have the knowledge. However they got it, they got it. Whether it was instilled in them, given to them, they learned it on their own, you know, started from scratch and built up an empire. Whether, However they attained the knowledge, the difference between the 1% and the 99% is knowledge. Because if I taught you everything I know, you would be able to do everything I'm doing, correct or incorrect. Yeah, I think it's hunger. To, to actually want to apply it. 
Well, again, we're not we're not talking about someone who wants to be broke on the street. I'm talking about 99% of the yeah, population. You, you're saying, okay, we, we need the knowledge. Okay, but knowledge without uh, the, the right state of mind or mindset that you can really achieve it, that they can't. Yeah, but dude, if I just told you where to go find a billion dollars, would you go get it? Yes. Okay, so you're not lacking the, the execution part, are you? Mm -hmm. You're lacking the knowledge. You don't know where the billion dollars is, so you can't go get shit. If I told you where the billion dollars was, you'd go get it. And I believe that 99% of the population are willing to do the work. They just don't have the knowledge. They don't know what to do. They, their mindset's not right, and they don't have the knowledge. So I want to go down in history as the guy who started, because I won't be the guy who finishes it. I just want to inspire whoever does finish the job. But I want knowledge to be, to be available worldwide. I want the ability for anyone who wants the knowledge to get it. I want to get it from the people who have it and bring it to the people who need it. And then I think that will help solve poverty. I think it'll help solve depression. I think it'll help solve marriages. I think it'll help solve a lot. So But that's like It's like saying uh, that uh, knowledge about uh, how to lose fat. There is knowledge. In today's world we have all the knowledge in the world. So why most people are fat? Obesity is like 70% of the population. Yeah, because they don't want to seek discomfort. So again, it's psychology. Right. Well, again, I mean, at the end of the day, it boils down to mindset no matter what. Absolutely. It's 99% mindset. What got you to, to start your light speed VT? Belief. You believe in your head. You believe no matter what. You had to believe that it's going to happen. No matter what's going to happen in the outside world, Which is in the inside, when you, we switch the inside, I believe that the outside will change automatically. So, yeah. I would agree. So, where can we find you? Man, you can find me on any platform just by typing in Brad Lee, L E A. But uh, I think officially it's at the real Brad Lee. Yes. You can find me at droppingbombs.com. Subscribe to my podcast. It's getting really popular. I'm getting a, lot of, getting a lot of great guests on there. You can find me at bradlee.com. You can find me on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, Snapchat, just at the real Brad Lee. Yes. Thank you so much, Brad. You, you really shared with us a lot of information. And really, go and check this guy out because he's amazing and he's a real entrepreneur, not fake. So thanks again, man. My pleasure, man. Thanks for having me. If you enjoyed this interview or any other one from the Mind Body Podcast, feel free to subscribe to my podcast at iTunes, SoundCloud, and at my YouTube channel. Also, feel free to share or leave a message at the comments below because your opinion is really important to me. Just like I always say, leaders create leaders, and we all here to grow together. For more information about fat loss, gaining muscle, and taking your mind to a whole new level, check my site at www.lidodayan.com. Till then, never, ever forget to smile. See you soon.